Chapter 179 Feast As Lumian gazed at the smoldering remnants of the paper, memories of Mr. K's relentless pressure flooded his mind. So a shepherd's essence lies in grazing. They graze upon the souls and characteristics of other beyonders or beyonder creatures to harness their abilities. Thus, a seasoned shepherd is truly unparalleled. They excel in close combat, long-range attacks, and a multitude of mystical techniques. In fact, a contractee is somewhat like a simplified version of a shepherd. Each contract is limited to a single ability. When one sequence is low, the number of contracts is severely restricted. At most, it might reach five, but often it doesn't exceed three. If one fails to choose their abilities wisely, they may struggle to defeat an ordinary person armed with a gun. It's not comparable to a shepherd's power, where grazing bestows all abilities undiminished. Of course, at the level of the Padre, signing 10 or 20 contracts becomes a different experience. Furthermore, contracts often target beings from the spirit world with a wide array of peculiar abilities. Beyonders encountering them for the first time will find it challenging to adapt. The more Lumion pondered, the more dread Mr. K instilled in him. Suppressing his thoughts, Lumion stood up and let out an inward sigh. No wonder Madame Magician believes Mr. K can withstand Susanna Matisse an evil spirit. Leaving the room, Lumian approached Louis and Sarkota with composure and uttered, Have the kitchen prepare dinner. Boss, what would you like to eat? Louis inquired before Sarkota could speak. Lumian couldn't recall the menu at Sao de Balbrise's attached cafe. He pondered for a moment and replied, Bring me a set meal. Join me. All right. Louis signaled Sarkota to inform the cafe attendant. Lumian settled at Baron Brignes' favorite table and picked up the day's newspaper. The Treyarch Gazette adorned the top, followed by the Reformer Daily, People's Voice, Action News, Intus Daily, Friends of the People, and other prominent newspapers. Lumian couldn't resist turning his head, a hint of amusement in his voice as he asked Louis, Is this what Brignes typically reads? A mobster concerned about national affairs? Louis glanced at Sakoda on the other side and replied with a smile. He doesn't read such things. He only insists that we avoid offending reporters in newspapers. If possible, we should subscribe to influential newspapers. Occasionally, he'll spend money to place advertisements for Sao de Balbrise, boasting of the presence of captivating dancers here. He usually reads the three newspapers and magazines at the bottom. Avoiding conflicts with newspapers and reporters. That makes sense. If the Trier Gazette publishes news of a significant mob presence in the market district, the Savoy mob will be doomed the next day. Those old men still value their reputation. Lumin gained a bit more understanding. He then retrieved the newspapers and magazines from the bottom. There was Novel Weekly, Men's Aesthetics, and Ghost Face, a magazine filled with Trier gossip and contemporary jokes. Isn't this more interesting than the Reformer Daily and Action News? Lumian picked up Novel Weekly and delved into the latest serialized story. Casually, he inquired, Where did the funds and advertising fees for these newspapers come from? Louis pondered for a moment, beads of cold sweat forming on his forehead, but he couldn't provide an answer. Just then, Sarkota chimed in, It's deducted from the 100,000 vodor we set aside for cultivating ties with the police. Lumian nodded approvingly satisfied that it wouldn't hinder his gains as the new leader of the Savoy mob. Before long, the cafe attendant arrived with their food. Onion minced pigeon, smoked rock crab, hot bamboo chicken pie, stewed mutton brain, stewed veal slices, grilled oysters with vanilla, two salads, scarlet cheese, grilled almond sauce, a glass of red, white, and blue liquor, and a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. The fragrant aromas mingled together, wafting into Lumian's nostrils and causing his mouth to water even more. Just as expected from Treyar, even an ordinary cafe's a set meal offers such a variety of dishes. If this were Lowen, I'd be limited to choosing between pan-fried steak or stewed peas with tender mutton. Lumian, being a pure intision, mockingly compared Lowen's cuisine based on his impressions from various newspapers, magazines, and folk jokes. He lifted the glass of tricolored liquor and took a sip, then pointed to the armchairs on either side of the table, saying, Let's eat together. 
Louis bowed slightly and replied with a smile. Boss, we'll take turns eating after you finish. Lumian didn't insist and savored his first feast since arriving in Treyar, and it was on the house. It had to be said that the chefs at Sal de Balbris were truly skilled. Lumian nodded repeatedly as he enjoyed his meal. Among the dishes, he found the mutton brain most delightful. Skillfully infused with several spices, the fishy and gamey flavors of the brain were cleverly balanced, leaving behind a delicate texture akin to Roselle tofu, accompanied by a rich and enticing fragrance. He finished a glass of red, white, and blue liquor, and one-third of the bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. Then, he gestured for Louis and Sarkota to take their turns. Lumian picked up Novel Weekly and Ghostface magazines, ready to delve into their contents. In the pages of Ghostface, Lumian's eyes fell upon a familiar name, Duvar. The proprietor of the restaurant renowned for inventing Duvar's broth had amassed a fortune and relocated to Cati de la Maison de Opera. An intriguing anecdote caught Lumian's attention within the Ghostface pages. Duvar's infatuation with Pearl, a stage actress from Lowen and a Treyarch courtesan, had cost him a fortune. The tale recounted a banquet held at Pearl's private residence, where she lay naked on an enormous silver platter, served by attendants, in the presence of over a dozen guests. This shattered Duvar's heart. He had even attempted suicide to no avail. Lumian couldn't decide whether to sigh at the Treyarian's tendency to exaggerate, or to jest at the Loanese for not being as conservative as they seemed. It appeared that the latter adapted swiftly in Intis, or perhaps he should mock Duvar for his unblemished innocence, despite being a Treyarian in his forties. At times, Lumian couldn't help but wonder if these behaviors stemmed from the influence of a beyonder's nature, or if the followers of the malevolent god couldn't rein in their impulses. Naturally, had it not been for the shared inclinations among the Treyarians and the fact that many things posed no issues, these individuals would have been exposed long ago. After Louis and Sarkota had finished their meal, Lumian led them down to the first floor. The dance hall buzzed with activity in the evening. Jenna stood upon the wooden stage, her voice carrying a melodious tune accompanied by the band. Couples below embraced one another, twirling around the floor. Lumian cast a fleeting glance at the scene before redirecting his gaze and striding toward the exit. Boss, where are we headed? Louis inquired. Lumian chuckled. Am I the boss, or are you? Do I need to report my whereabouts to you? Louis' expression froze. He glanced at the silent Sarkota and suddenly felt that emulating his composure wasn't a bad idea. I, I'm merely concerned about our next course of action, he asserted. As Lumian made his way out of the dance hall, Amidst greetings from the bouncers, he smiled and replied, I will inform you when there is a need for you to know. He returned to Alberge du Coq d'Oré, but veered away from room 207, where he had intended to retrieve Mr. K's finger and his revolver. Instead, he ventured into the underground bar. Before Lumian could assess the situation, Charlie's voice reached his ears, brimming with enthusiasm. Have you heard the news? Ciel now goes by the nickname... Lion, CL. Little Minx Jenna came up with it. Have you laid eyes on her? I doubt you've ever seen a woman as stunning as her. She possesses an alluring figure and a face that could bewitch anyone. When she sings, everyone yearns to abandon their faith for her. And she took a liking to CL and invited him to dance. They were inseparable, grinding each other. Oh, the dance hall was dimly lit. You can well imagine what transpired. Lumian suddenly felt like he had become the protagonist of a news story in Ghostface. Louis and Sarkota, standing behind him, felt both embarrassed and concerned for their boss. They were embarrassed that the person at their small round table might be boasting on their boss's behalf. They were worried that if it were true, their boss would be making Red Boots Franca a cuckold. In that case, they would be in serious trouble. Franca not only held considerable power, but was also the mistress of their big boss. Charlie, Holding a beer, caught sight of Lumian, and his smile froze. He hopped off the small round table and approached Lumian, coughing before speaking. Hey, CL, would you mind if I shared some details about your romantic entanglement? Instead of answering, Lumian asked, How did you find out? Charlie grinned. Many people know. It spread from the Sal de Gris Mill. In other words, the poison sperm mob is aware that I danced with Jenna twice before assassinating Hammer Ite. That's true.
I only disguised myself back then, without even changing my hair color. I even provoked those around me. In hindsight, coupled with Hammerite's demise, they will surely recognize me. As Red Boot's mistress, Jenna may also become a target for their vengeance. There is no need to be overly concerned, though. She is protected by Red Boots. As a seasoned beyonder and a formidable demoness, Franco won't be careless in such matters. Lumin nodded, understanding the situation. He smiled at Charlie and said, Feel free to share. The more the news spread, the more it would attract Red Boots' attention, deterring any potential reprisal from the poison sperm mob. Lumian asked Charlie, Why didn't you go to Sao de Balbris? Charlie forced a smile and replied, The manager, René, wants me to start officially tomorrow. He offered me $84 per month. As they conversed, Lumian noticed his neighbor sitting at the bar counter, the abject author, Gabriel. He still sported this evil, the greasy brown hair, large black framed glasses, a faded linen shirt, and black dungarees. Lumian bid farewell to Charlie and approached Gabriel, asking, What's the matter? Gabriel, sipping on a glass of light green absinthe, glanced at him and smiled bitterly. My script was rejected. Those managers didn't even bother reading it. I've submitted it to dozens of theaters, but no one is willing to give it a chance. Dozens of theaters? Lumian's heart stirred as he casually inquired. Did you send your script to Theater de Leoncian Keja Pigeons in our market district? Yes, Gabriel sighed. Their manager turned me down too. He mentioned that they write their own scripts or commission custom ones. Lumian took a seat and asked, Who is their manager? 